Hello, I'm JC, and you're watching Confident Real Estate, which should probably, now that I think about it, maybe be called Confident Real Estate and Living. We are going to cover a range of topics that include real estate, wealth creation, wealth preservation, generational wealth planning, real estate, tax advice and investing strategies, real estate, philanthropy, positive mindset development, and of course, um, real estate. We all go through the journey that we want for ourselves, for our future, for our children and our families uh, to develop something of some substance. And uh, hopefully together we can share some stories and delve deeper into the topics that are of true importance on your own journey and give your journey confidence because it's confident real estate. It's the name of the channel. Kind of thought that was obvious. Anyway, listen, a decade ago, I was a young attorney in New York City who, to be honest, barely knew where the bathroom was. And as much as law school and the bar exam prepare you to be professionally licensed and admitted to practice and give legal counsel in your jurisdiction, it's kind of about all they do. So if you're an aspiring attorney out there, sorry, there's still no replacement for experience. The E word experience. Nothing is going to give you the confidence and knowledge that comes from experience. For me, both as a real estate attorney as an, and as an investor, I figured I'd share some of what I know with you. Why? Why would I do that? Because uh, I've seen the channels that are out there. Some are very good. Some give some sound advice. And some, uh, let's call them subpar. I won't name names, but... Uh, you know who you are. Sorry about that. Unfortunately, most of the good videos and channels that are out there on YouTube and elsewhere on the internet are providing the same broad stroke information over and over again. And if you've watched these videos, I'm sure you have a general idea of what I'm talking about. Do you know how to house hack? Have you figured out how to buy a house for little to no money down in a tertiary market? These are all great, but they're not going to help you get to that next level to really get past those initial deals. You can't keep doing the same strategy over and over again and expect to really build phenomenal portfolio wealth. Again, all great sites for the most part, but maybe we need to delve a little deeper. There are major topics that they're not touching on, such as all the stumbling blocks that can affect you once you've bought the property that you can negotiate around before you even close general negotiation strategies, due diligence, financial structuring and long-term planning, tax strategies, equity syndication and debt leveraging, your investment entity organizational documents that control everything. How do you structure them to protect yourself, your fellow investors, to maintain and control the management of everything? Those, by the way, are the documents that the court's going to look at should you find yourself in front of a judge. And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of that being said, let's get into the broad strokes of what you're looking to accomplish and learn, because there has to be a reason why you clicked on this video. Get ready, here we go. So what is generational wealth? Generational wealth in its most common understanding is passing wealth from one generation on to the next. Purest forms of that are paying for your kids' college tuition, helping them pay for their first house, paying for a wedding perhaps, all things that'll set your children up with a financial base that's very strong, leading them to a stronger financial foundation in the future and allowing them the ability to get to that next level themselves. Sorry, quick second. Can we talk about just how expensive kids are? Two things they don't tell you when they're born. One, they don't come with instruction manuals, and two, there's no future receipt for all the expenses you're gonna incur. It's a good thing that they are absolutely adorable and small and uh, melt your heart. Carry on. But what if you wanna leave them a portfolio of assets, cash flowing assets at that? How do you obtain those for yourself? How do you set up yourself for retirement, most importantly, and ultimately, perhaps your children, and even maybe your grandchildren. That's what we're gonna 
delve into a little deeper on this channel so that we have an understanding of what cash flowing assets are, what investments are. These are all things that you can learn on a million other channels on YouTube. But here we're gonna delve a little deeper than just the surface subtopics that are so commonly recorded and repeated video after video. So what type of assets create wealth? Cash flowing assets and compounding interest assets. What are those exactly? Stocks that issue dividends, interest paying bonds, certificates of deposit, also known as CDs. Remember these things? I, I don't really remember them either. Savings accounts or money market accounts. REITs. Real estate investment trusts. Index funds in general. What else? Cash flowing real estate investments. Uh, cash flowing real estate investments. And uh, cash flowing real estate investments. Did you catch it the third time? The single greatest way to create generational wealth is investments in real estate. Ideally, you're going to diversify your portfolio with a combination of investments like index funds, money market accounts, 529 plans, because kids are expensive, 401ks, so one day maybe you could retire. But at the end of the day, how much of that do you really have any control over? Most of those are going to be held in probably manager-managed accounts that come with fees that may seem small, but over the long term, they're greatly affecting your compounding interest returns. So what do you do? Real estate investing, does that actually have any level of control? Yeah, it does. Because at the end of the day, it's your property. You have the deed. You're not waiting for a shareholders meeting so that a hedge fund manager can make decisions that affect their investment strategy to provide the greatest return to their investors that may not be in line with what you were trying to accomplish in your own portfolio. With real estate, it's yours. The numbers don't lie. Cash is cash. And the cash flow comes in every month into your hand. So what does it come down to? It comes down to your level of understanding. And that comes from your education on the type of investments you're going to make. And the ability to pull the trigger comes from confidence. So what do you need to understand before you start investing in real estate? The general broad strokes of it, as you may already know, are things like the markets where you want to invest. Are you focusing on primary markets? Expensive. Secondary markets? Less expensive and decent recession rate returns. Tertiary markets? Hmm, we'll get into that. Transit-oriented development? Hmm. Student housing? Hmm. These are all types of things that you can look into based on the geographic area of where you want to invest. Now that we discussed markets, let's talk asset classes. There's multifamily, single family residence, mixed use, hospitality, retail, industrial. It all depends on your investment strategy, where you're looking to invest, the type of markets that you're in, etc. Variables. What else? Maintenance and management expenses, debt service figuring out how you're going to structure your mortgage financing, perhaps your equity contributions from co-investors, leveraging your asset value. And of course, the broad stroke things like planning for vacancies and capital improvements, you know, things break. All of these topics and the different investment strategies and negotiation and tax positioning and wealth management strategies that go along with it are all things we're going to dis discuss and dissect in future videos. For now, the key is to get a grasp of the bigger picture and to compartmentalize each facet of your own investment strategy. And then we're going to attack each of those compartments individually, obviously with a heavy focus on real estate investing. Everything we just discussed in this video may sound intimidating, but at the end of the day, it's just fancy jargon and technical industry terminology. What are jargon and terminology? Synonyms for words. Words never killed anybody. You just got to understand what they mean. Think of it this way. 
When you were three years old, tying your shoe and crossing the street by yourself seemed like monumental tasks that would take years of experience to master. But you did it. And then you got to high school and became a teenager, and all you could think about was the idea of freedom on the open road. And then you got behind the wheel for the first time, and you probably <laughs> your pants like the rest of us. Just saying. You mastered it anyway. Now you do those things as second nature. Tying your shoe, crossing a street, driving a car. Who thinks about those things in great detail anymore? They're so simple. Why? Experience. It's the same with investing. The biggest benefit is that with preparation and experience comes knowledge. And knowledge allows us the ability to spot opportunities and seize them. Opportunities that we may not even realize exist just yet. We all start this investment journey as a scared toddler, standing on the street corner, waiting for somebody to hold our hand and guide us through the traffic. But trust me, it's much easier to spot the opportunities when you have the benefit of a bird's eye view. And that is what confident real estate and living is all about. Please like this video if you want to hear more and don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below if you want to learn more about confident real estate investing and living. Until next time, don't forget, discipline never leads anyone to failure. The same way excuses never lead anybody to success. Until next time.